Welcome to an introduction to applications of systems of ordinary differential equations. In this lesson, we'll take a look at two examples where we use systems of ordinary differential equations to model applications. First, we will consider salt and brine tanks, as shown below, where water flows from one tank to the other, and we'll assume the tanks are evenly mixed. Suppose we have two tanks, each containing volume V liters of salt brine. The amount of salt in the first tank is X1 grams, and the amount of salt in the second tank is x2 grams. The liquid is perfectly mixed and flows at a rate of r liters per second out of each tank into the other. The rate of change of x1, the amount of salt in tank one, that is x1 prime, is the rate of salt coming in minus the rate going out. The rate coming in is the density of the salt in tank two, which is x2 divided by v times the rate r and the rate coming out is the density of the salt in tank one, that is x1 divided by v times the rate r. In other words, x1 prime is equal to x2 divided by v times r minus x1 divided by v times r, which we can also write as r divided by v times x2 minus r divided by v times x1. Factoring out r divided by v, we have x1 prime equals r divided by v times the difference of x2 and x1. Similarly, we have the rate r2 prime, where the roles of x1 and x2 are reversed. All in all, the system of ODEs for the problem is, again, the first equation we just discussed, and the second equation, the rate of change of the salt in tank two given by x2 prime is equal to r divided by v times difference of x1 and x2. Again, notice the only difference is x1 and x2 are reversed in the second equation. In this system, we cannot solve for x1 or x2 separately. We must solve for both x1 and x2 at once because the amount of salt in one tank affects the amount in the other. We can't know x1 before we know x2 and vice versa. We don't know yet how to find all these solutions, but intuitively, we can at least find some solutions. Suppose we know that initially the tanks have the same amount of salt. That is, we have an initial condition that x1 of zero equals x2 of zero, which is equal to some constant c then clearly the amount of salt coming in and going out of each tank is the same, so the amounts are not changing. In other words, x1 equals c and x2 equals c, where c is some constant, which is a solution because x1 prime equals x2 prime equals zero, and x2 minus x1 equals x1 minus x2 equals zero, so the equations are satisfied. Let us think about the setup a little more without solving it. Suppose the initial conditions are x1 of zero equals a, and x2 of zero equals b, for two different constants, a and b. Since no salt is coming in or out of this closed system, the amount of salt is constant. That is, x1 plus x2 is constant, and so is equal to a plus b. Intuitively, if a is bigger than b, then more salt will flow out of tank one than into it. Eventually, after a long time, we would then expect the amount of salt in each tank to equalize. In other words, the solutions of both x1 and x2 would tend towards the quantity a plus b divided by two. Once we know how to solve systems, we will find out that this is in fact true. And now let's look at a second order example. For this, we will return to the mass and spring setup, but this time we'll consider two masses. Consider one spring with constant k and two masses m1 and m2. Think of the masses as carts that ride along a straight track with no friction. Let x1 be the displacement of the first cart and x2 be the displacement of the second cart. That is, we put the two carts somewhere with no tension on the spring and we mark the position of the first and second cart and call those zero positions. Then x1 measures how far the first cart is from its zero position and x2 measures how far the second cart is from its zero position. The force exerted by the spring on the first cart is the spring constant k times the difference of x2 and x1, since x2 minus x1, is how far the spring is stretched or compressed from the rest position. The force exerted on the second card is the opposite, thus the same thing with a negative sign. Newton's second law states that force equals mass times acceleration, so the system of equations is m1 times x1 double prime equals k times the difference of x2 and x1, and m2 times x2 double prime equals negative k times the difference of x2 and x1. Again, we cannot solve for the x1 or x2 variable separately. We must solve for both x1 and x2 at the same time, 
since where the first cart goes depends on exactly where the second cart goes, and vice versa. We'll go ahead and stop here for this lesson. I hope you found this introduction helpful.